there's approximately 37 trillion dollars of money circulating in the world today. Yes, 37 trillion. And not all of this money is actually legal or what we call white money. A large portion of the money floating around is undeclared or black money, a term we're pretty familiar with. But what exactly is black money and how does it circulate around the financial system without us knowing? Let's clear that up. As citizens of the country, we pay taxes. Direct taxes like income tax or indirect taxes like GST and VAT. All the income we declare to the government and pay taxes on is colloquially known as white money. So the very basic definition of black money is anything we do not declare or show in our taxes. Black money can come in two forms, money that we have illegally or money that we we obtain legally just don't declare to the government. When I was a kid, I always thought that all black money was illegal and only the big billionaires and crooks had it. But as I grew older, I realized that's just not true. Let me give you an example. Say there's a shopkeeper named Raj who owns a medical shop. He gets a lot of customers a day and makes around 30,000 rupees a month. That 30,000 per month is to be declared while filing his taxes. And of course, it will just be in his bank account. Right? But what if instead of accepting Google Pay and Paytm, he asks for cash? Now that 30,000 might not reflect in his bank account. It could literally just all sit in his cupboard or under the toilet. So he doesn't declare it to the government and that's obviously not taxed. This is exactly how black money is created. This is not strictly illegally owned, but is part of a hit to the economic structure of a country. But that's pretty small scale, right? Let's take it a little further. Let's say Raj is also buying a house for one crore from Yash. But he pays Yash 60% by check and 40% by cash. Now that 40 lakhs has transferred hands and is a much more sizable chunk of what should be money that is taxed up. This is still money owned through a sale. It hasn't been declared, but it's legal and it's still black money. Here's where a sort of chain begins. Now Yash has a large sum of black money in his hands. How will he showcase that income while still making sure he isn't taxed for it? Well, there are multiple ways to get this done. One of the most popular conversion tactics is by way of investment. Raj can invest 5 lakhs in a 10-year insurance scheme. While the first premium of 50,000 will be paid by check, the rest of the yearly transactions will simply be paid by cash. Now the black money has moved into another market, exchanging hands for the third time. He can take a step further by creating a bogus loan from a relative for 10 lakhs. In this case, Yash will take a check from Mr. Singh as a loan on paper. The transaction is soon reversed by giving back another check. Here, no actual money has been exchanged, but the black money is now accounted for on paper. Insurance or loans are one way to do this, but otherwise a car, a house, an investment, or even a sale of a business. These methods are commonly used by people across the country and the world to hide part of their income and just save on taxes. Now, what happens when you want to transact in black money on a larger scale? Here's where shell companies come into play. A shell company, in essence, is a company which does not conduct any actual business, but is still registered on paper as a legal, fully operational company in the eyes of the law. These shell companies are usually set up overseas in tax havens where the laws are most favorable for the taxpayer. Let's say Stark Industries is thriving and has sustained a profit of 10 lakhs, out of which 7 lakhs is declared on paper and 3 lakhs is in black money. The business would then set up a shell company, fund this shell company with let's say 5 lakhs from the aforementioned profits and artificially show assets like furniture, building expenses, etc. in the shell corporation in the sum of 3 lakhs for the undeclared profit, thereby reducing your Stark Industries profits to only 2 lakhs and converting your black money to white simultaneously. Since the shell company isn't making any profits on paper anyway, all the money transferred may not be taxable. So now Stark Industries will only be taxed on the 2 lakhs and will have cleared off all their undeclared income. Another interesting way to launder money or change it from white to black is called smurfing. This is mainly done to avoid detection by authorities who track large sum transactions. Say Raj, Raj is back and this time he's involved in criminal activity. Raj deposits his illegally gained revenue into many bank accounts. Now authorities are very careful to look for large sum transactions of let's say 10 lakhs. So 
all of Raj's single transfers will be for less than that. Say for instance, 8 or 9 lakhs. This way, he stays under the radar and he's able to move a lot of his cash through his multiple accounts, through multiple friends or family members' names. To take it a step further, these small transactions can then be transferred to an offshore bank account in another person's name. Once the money is in that offshore account, Raj can use it to purchase assets like real estate or large consumer goods. The money used to purchase real estate can again be partly paid in cash and the circulation of the black money goes on and on. So yeah, there are a lot of ways for black money to circulate through an economy. But if we know all of this, why is it so difficult to regulate or control it? Well, the simple fact that black money lies with funds that aren't declared to governments is exactly why it's so difficult for governments to figure out what is black money and what is white. Demonetization was one way that the Indian government tried to eradicate black money. Since all large sum notes like 500 or thousands were made invalid overnight, those with thousands or even lakhs sitting in their houses would suddenly rush to deposit them into their accounts. And hence, regulators could track the large sum transactions and see the difference in their accounts. However, as we now know, that didn't really work out too well. The government of India is honestly trying various methods to tackle the problem of black money. They've enacted laws that focus on reporting economic transactions, like the Central Goods and Services Tax Act and the Fugitive Economic Offenders Act, among others. Well, meanwhile, for people like Raj, it'll continue to be business as usual. If you like this kind of video where we're talking about financial stuff and we're trying to understand the intricacies of the economy, let us know in the comments. Because we have a lot more ideas and we would love to hear what you want to watch. Hey guys, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The kinds of videos we want to make are to ask fun and compelling questions, explore weird and intriguing stories and delve into secret histories. So if that's something you're interested in, this is the channel for you. Don't forget to tell us what you like in the comments.